It's like magic. Good day, everybody. Glenn here, coming to you from my home to start what I think is a new video series. Finally received enough subscribers that I have my own handle. I want to thank everybody that's been following along my channel, liking my videos, watching my videos, and subscribing. I really do appreciate it. It means a lot to me, and it helps me become more creative so that I can continue to share content like this with you. Chicken tractors. So not everything I do is hiking, and I'm starting to explore a little bit into showing different aspects of my life that I like to share. You know, things I learned, experiences, stuff like that. So about a little over a year and a half ago, my wife introduced me to chickens. Oh my God. Oh my we decided we were going to take on chickens, uh, not just for egg production, but to have as pets. <laughs> <laughs> Probably comes off as a shocker to a lot of you, and it did to me at first. Uh, but I'm going to be honest with you, these little, these little buggers, they grew onto me pretty quick. Uh, they're very sweet. Some of them get along more with others, some don't. <laughs> We have five beautiful birds. We have two buff Orpingtons, uh, Tessa and Goose. We have two Easter Eggers. Uh, one is Betty, the other is Hazel. And then our fifth special bird is Riza. Five chickens. We had purchased a coop for the four chickens when we first got them. And then we later inherited a fifth chicken that had a deformed wing. My wife, bless her soul, she, um, she decided to take, you know, otherwise they were going to put it down. So when we started with the four chickens, we had purchased a coop that was predator-proof, and it wasn't cheap by any means, and it was fairly easy to assemble, and it works for the most part, but we decided that we wanted to allow the chickens to free-range a little bit more. They'll have the ability to get out, get bugs, eat some grass, you know, get whatever nutrients they can't get in the, in the run. Because uh, we use, started with a pebble rock base in the run and then we moved to sand because it's a little bit more cleaner and easier to maintain. After endless research on trying to figure out how we could find a way to free range them without having to worry about something snatching them. Because we have foxes nearby, we have possums, we have raccoons, we even have red tailed hawks that nest in a cell tower right by our house. So after Endless research, I found a YouTube video with a link to a website, which I will share in the description below, a YouTube video that showed how to build a do-it-yourself chicken tractor. This is something that you can put the chickens in that's predator-proof, and you can move it around your yard as you please. So I went to this website. These plans are free, so you know, you just, you click on to add them to a car, and then when you get to the checkout process, the only thing you really have to put in is an email address, and then just like that, the building plans were sent to my email. It included the material list and building diagrams, measurements and everything to build the chicken tractor. So what I'll do is I'm gonna go in our backyard and I'm gonna show you the chicken tractor that I had made using those plans. Another thing that we did because some of our chickens do okay in the winter in the coop outside. Some of them do not. And our special bird likes to flip. Sometimes she'll flip. And we were worried about having her out in the winter seasons with that disability. So I had taken the tractor plans. I changed the dimensions a little bit. And we built a space for them in the basement to help keep them warm, but so still giving them a place where they can rest and eat and walk around and uh, roost, a little perch and everything. So let's go introduce you to some chickens. Thank <laughs> you. 
So there's Beatty. This is Tessa. This is Goose. And this is their, this is where they live. It's kind of messy in there, sorry. They are molting right now because of the cold weather. Let's see if we have any eggs today yet. Oh, no eggs yet. Oh, you girls are messy. I'll go ahead and show you. We have two coops. It's getting colder outside, so another thing that we did is we built these uh, panel walls that fit the run pretty well. And we covered it with a polyethylene plastic material to help keep out drafts. It also does a pretty good job at insulating the heat on the inside. Welcome to the Fluffy Butt Hut. So this coop, I can't remember exactly how much this one set us back, but this one cost a pretty penny, and it was fairly easy to put together. Um, this one was also fairly easy to put together. Uh, you can see that we predator-proofed it by adding the blocks. I think they go down about eight or so inches, and we did the same thing over here. These are a little bit deeper, though. Good morning, ladies. We put up some uh, foam trimming along parts of the door here that are got some gaps just to kind of keep the drafts from going in here. I'll just open this very briefly just to kind of show you in there a little bit. We insulated the walls with built uh, Reflectix. You can buy rolls of that on Amazon. Hello, baby. Hello, baby. Uh, the only thing I don't like about this one, um, my wife, you know, she's concerned that something might come along and eventually figure it out and get in there. So one thing we're doing to prevent that, what we've been using is we will take a zip tie, run it over here and tie it off. And that not only keeps this gate secure, but it keeps, uh, keeps the inside of the coop secure as well. But there's no occupants in this one because she's uh, currently in the basement for the winter. So here is the chicken tractor that we made based off the plans provided. Purchased all the wood uh, from Home Depot and had the gentleman at Home Depot cut it to size for us. <coughs> this is the finished product. After all is said and done, this chicken tractor, materials, parts. This set us back about $150 to $200 to make. Uh, we put the chicken wire. I went all the way around with the chicken wire just to be safe. Uh, but then we also, like the plans suggested, we put on this vinyl siding. And that's to kind of help give them some protection from the wind, you know, if it's windy out so they're not completely exposed. Also provides, you know, some cover for them if it's raining. Uh, so yeah, this is the chicken tractor that I put together using the plans that I found off the website, Sow the Land, which was also discovered on a YouTube video, which I will include both the website and the video in the description below. So this is a great way for you know, people with chickens or want to free range their chickens. But we've got these little hook latches. And I just put the little flag in there like so. And uh, it, the whole thing is pretty fairly heavy, so nothing's really going to pick this thing up. I mean, if you're not, you're not leaving your chickens to live in this, obviously, so, you, you know. I don't worry too much about stuff digging underneath that I'm not going to notice during the day. For the two ladies that will be living in the basement for the winter, uh, I took the same concept as the chicken tractor. I used a little bit different materials and I changed the measurements up a little bit, but we'll go ahead, we'll go in the basement right now and I will show you where they live. Coming down to the basement. Good morning, ladies. You are also messy girls. This is Riza. This 
This is Hazel. Are currently residing in our basement. To help with odors, we have an air purifier down here, which works very well. I took the same concept as the chicken tractor, but changed the dimensions a little bit. They are, however, different sizes, and that's no one's fault. Turns out when we were getting the wood cut for this at Home Depot, we, we missed a couple pieces that we should have got cut, so we did some sacrificing, and we made this one a little bit longer and skinnier than this one. As you can see, they both operate the same way as a chicken tractor. We even installed some little perches for them so they can bruise. Hers are very short. She has a tough time getting around sometimes. And we also built these like little wood tubs that we lined with the plastic. And that's just to kind of help keep the floor from getting dirty as you can see they are very messy girls so having those wood tubs definitely helps especially when they you know are kicking around sand and stuff like that it doesn't get everywhere um, I didn't want to use chicken wire for these because that would make these crazy heavy so I just went with this uh, plastic fencing material you know for the spring season when they go back outside it'll help us clean this up a little easier Thanks again for watching, you guys. I just kind of wanted to share um, the chicken tractor. They don't like that I'm talking so loud. I just wanted to share the chicken tractor build because that was something that I did a lot of research for to find and found and am very proud of what I was able to build out of it, both outside and in the basement. I'm sure me and my wife aren't the only ones that consider our chickens pets. Uh, for those, I mean, there's plenty of people out there that don't consider chickens pets, and that's fine. Um, but we love them. They provide us eggs. We provide them love and a place to live. So if you have any questions, please comment below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content. So until the next one, you guys have a great day, and I'll catch you around. All right. See you. Take care.